We live in a time of amazing opportunities, yet great challenges. 500 years ago, a cultural movement called the humanism has placed us at the center of the universe. We used to dream to go beyond our human possibilities, to reach places that we could only imagine. But what happened then? 500 years later, we now face in a new era, the superhumanism. <laughs> Think about it. Four billion of us has a small machine that is 1,000 times more powerful than the computer that took us to the moon. Only with this, we can access the world knowledge and reach anybody, at any time, and anywhere. We are some kind of hybrids already. We are some kind of cyborg already. We are a hybrid between a human and a machine. But as we are achieving this, the narrative is almost changing from dreams to fears. We are scared that the artificial intelligence will take over, that we are teaching machines to completely replace us, to be a better version of us. But is it true? To answer this first, let's talk about how a machine learns today. Let's take a quiz. So what's the answer to the question mark? 81, thank you. <laughs> This is exactly the kind of behavior we're trying to teach machines. We're trying to teach machines to learn from experience. A good example of machine learning was when a supercomputer from Google Research made the headlines. When fed 10 million images, the supercomputer was able to recognize a cat with 75% accuracy. However, a three-year-old kid can do that with 100% accuracy. Truth is, humans and machines are fundamentally good at different things. We can't make sense of an enormous amount of data, but machines can do that efficiently. We are able to form plans and make decisions even in the most complex situations. But a machine can't make a basic judgment that would be simple for a three years old. I learned this at work while facing the limits of both humans and machines. Our work requires us to gain a deep understanding of people. We need to answer questions like, what makes people join a topic a brand or a movement. To do that, we have to understand that the cultures and beliefs, the way they see the world, why they make specific choices, what influences them. To do that, we have to look through millions and sometimes billions of data points. No human only or machine only solution is able to gain the level of understanding we're trying to achieve on people. So our solution was to create a hybrid intelligence. Our approach couples AI-driven research methodologies with the social sciences. But how does this hybrid intelligence actually work? So a few months ago, the Tourism Board of Sardinia reached out to us to conduct a market research in order to understand their market and to design a winning marketing strategy. Here are the steps we took. And you can see which one is led by humans, by machines, or by both. Step number one, understanding the business problem. Sardinia needed to gain a deep understanding of who the traveler is and why she wants to travel to Sardinia as opposed to, say, Apulia, North Africa. To do that, we have to go way beyond demographic data. Think about this. Can we define this person by saying she is a female, obviously, 43 years old, born in Nancy, living in Paris? We can't. Number two, data exploration and strategy. Here, 
we need to understand what matters for the French travelers interested in Sardinia and where to gather the data. So in simple words, we ask ourselves, where do French travelers gather to talk about Sardinia and to make decisions? Data gathering. So here we need to gather the data from a bunch of sources. This includes information from forum and communities, uh, historical records on reviews from OTA like Airbnb and Booking.com, purchase behavior, in this case it's hotels, and 200 more online sources. Number, number four, data integration. So since the data is coming from different sources, we need to integrate them into one coherent data store. And we need to clean the data as well. So eliminate uh, duplicates, missing values, inconsistencies, etc. Number five, data understanding. Here, we need to understand what is the data telling us. Since the data is uh, mostly qualitative, we can't possibly go into each review and each recommendation or each conversation. I mean, only Booking had 340,000. We can't. So what we do instead is using machine learning algorithms to explore the data, cluster it, and the flag for us section to explore further. This allows our team of humans, psychologists, ethnographers, analysts, to dig deeper by querying and analyzing the data. Here, we present our data, followed by actionable insights in a simple and effective manner to the stakeholders. So, do you remember the French traveler at the beginning? Now, with this hybrid intelligence, we are able to define how long is her trip, how she gets there, the locations she wants to visit, the tours, hotels, and restaurants she wants to book, the activities and sightseeing she's into, and most importantly, the problems and concerns she has. This might be specific to this project, but we did this for the most different segments, from mothers to the Burning Man and transformational festival ecosystem, from digital nomads to beauty product users, from fitness enthusiasts to binge watchers, from healthy living lovers to Italian Americans. <laughs> So these are just examples of how we could collaborate with machines as tools, not rivals. And we're not the only ones. Netflix's amazing recommendation engine that makes us binge wouldn't be that amazing without the team of humans that watch all the movies and TV shows to classify the content. They micro tag the characteristics as specific as how socially acceptable are the protagonists, or whether it has a happy, sad, or ambiguous end, and so on, before actually teaching the machine learning algorithm to meet your taste. Amazon cut the time that takes uh, to prepare a product for shipment from one hour to 50 minutes by using cobots, collaborative robots, as opposed to a human-only or a machine-only solution. Mercedes C-Class achieved tremendous levels of performance by de-automating the larger scale robots and using instead the smaller scale robots, collaborating with more people in the factory. The Japanese startup Ori Lab just launched a cafe where robot waiters work controlled from home by paralyzed people. Just imagine, there are millions of people in the world whose lives will be forever changed by this kind of virtual presence workforce. 
We are not machines, and machines are not humans. So why are we trying to race against them? <laughs> Quoting Peter Thiel, the founder of Palantir and PayPal, the most valuable businesses of the future will be built by entrepreneurs who seek to empower people as opposed to make them obsolete. I believe there are great benefits to those who find the strategic and creative ways to redesign the work with tech. We should capitalize on the best attributes of humans and computers as opposed to fearing the advent of machines taking over. We should be superhuman. <laughs> so here's my provocation for you. Are you guys using machines to take your skills to the next level? Or are you playing machines? Are you guys making yourself indispensable or easy to substitute? Thank you.